Hello again. Today I'm going to tie for you a parachute pattern that builds on materials used in previous videos. In addition, I will be demonstrating a loop technique that will be useful when making parachutes, especially from softer material. It's easier to tie than I'm about to make it look, and it fishes well. So we're kind of scrolling through the materials that I'm going to use, some Coque de Leon, there's some gray polypropylene that I'm going to use for the post. And that's a size 14 lightning strike DF3 hook in the vise. So I'll start to thread a couple of eye lengths behind the eye and snip the excess off here. I like to tie materials in on the way back. And um, I usually like to tie the, the firmer materials. When you're going to wrap materials in on the way back, it's tying them directly to the metal hook. So stronger or stiffer materials um, do okay with that. Soft tail fibers in some cases kind of tend to break if you wrap them right against the metal hook. So in that case, I would go all the way back and then have at least a thread layer underneath them. Sometimes add dubbing underneath them. So there I've tied in some sulky, a little piece of sulky tinsel. Um, I believe that's some kind of pearly color. I'm not sure the sulky designation. I kind of look at the rack in the craft store and pick out a few of them that look interesting to me. And that one does a good job of adding a little glint and strength to the bodies of flies. So here we've tied in a bundle of Coque de Leon fibers. They are a hook length. Um, it's going to be a dry fly, so... Having it a little longer is not a big deal here. And we snip off the, uh, the excess butts from the cocktail loom. Okay, I'll wrap up and back to kind of keep things even underneath. And I'm adding in about five moose hair fibers. You'll notice that one is darker than the others. As long as there's a mix, it produces a segmented body. And this is one of the materials that we used in an earlier pattern, earlier video. I'll work my way back to the base of the tail. And then wind forward. I'm still trying to keep that level underbody and we're going to use the rotary feature of the vise so put in a half hitch in this case a little super glue on the base won't hurt not sure how necessary it is because i'm going to put a little head cement in this case sally hansen's horse nails over top of the outside when I'm done, but the super glue will kind of help hold things in place until we get there. So I'm winding these fibers toward myself, and then I'm going to wrap in the thread direction with the sulky when I put the ribbon. And going back and forth like that will kind of strengthen things as well. That sulky is pretty tough material. Here we'll put a couple of cross wraps in to hold the moose hair down. You can see we got a nice segmented body. And that moose hair, because we got into the butts of it a little bit, I think it's a little hollow. So it should help us float this fly. Won't be the highest floating fly out there. But that's okay. They don't all sit on top of the water. So there we put a couple more whips in place. Still using the rotary feature of the vise. And I'll grab the sulky and <clears throat> kind of wrap it forward in the opposite direction. Trying to do about four or five wraps. Very similar to what the moose hair, um, the spacing on the moose hair. Again, a couple of cross wraps to hold that in place. And 
and snip off the excess. And you'll see me throughout this video kind of pick away at some very fine fibers. You see them when it's when the magnification is so much on the video, but um, basically what's going on there is my hands are a little rough and the ultra thread is I'm losing a fiber or two of it when it catches a rough spot on a finger. So I've kind of kept them out of the way. The thread didn't fail altogether and and it worked out. Here we're applying a little bit of Sally Hansen as far as nails. Make sure we get a good coating all over. Not too much. I don't want a shiny hard body per se. And it usually shrinks a little, maybe into the grooves as it dries. So there I'm showing you that I took that one strand of poly and divided it into three. I, it's about a card length a card width and length, and divide it into three. But when I tie it in in the middle here, this is one third of a strand, but I tie it in the middle, and it's going to be folded in half. So basically I'm using about a third of that total strand of poly for the post. So about three wraps to hold that in place. And then I've stripped the fibers off the bottom of that grizzly hackle. Here's where it differs from the atoms a little bit because I didn't put in a brown hackle as well. I'm not sure it needs it to fish well, but that is the authentic way. Now, if you notice here, I kind of do a cross wrap in one direction, almost like a, a weird figure eight. I'll go around and then I'll come from the backside and change my direction of thread, thread wraps back to the conventional method. Now I'm left-handed. I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, that's why you see it the way you do. You're not looking at my chin. Now there I've made a thread loop, and that's kind of the one of the techniques I wanted to show you. And add a half hitch so that we can park things for a second. And we'll get we'll use that thread loop in in a few minutes here. So we'll we'll dab in the thorax. This is the super fine. It's kind of a shade of all of it goes well with the, uh, the moose hair and could imitate anything from, a, I don't know, a many different mayfly patterns all the way through like sulfurs all the way to whatever. Again, I'll probably have to dub this in two sections because the camera's kind of in the way. You can't spin a long, a longer section of, of dub thread in between. There, I bumped the camera. I knew I'd done that once or twice while I was filming this, but. So the word of the day here is sparse. So make sure when you're dubbing on sections of that or adding sections of dubbing that you're using little sparse only a few fibers Kelly Gallup likes to drop them and see if they float that's a good way to see if you're using too much um, the idea is as long as it stays wrapped around a thread you're good to go so I wrap forward and I'm going to finish right behind the eye I'll do a whip finish here, work back and then back to the just behind the eye to pull it tight. And trim off the excess. Now here you see me change the position of the hook and device. I don't know if any of this is any easier. It's just different. It's something that I learned to do. Again, with Poly is a parachute. It's not a big deal. If this was just a few um, calf tail fibers or something and you were using the loop technique, this it might be more necessary. Um, anyways, I kind of lay it sideways and, and put it on center. And I'm going to start the other thread 
that I showed. This is an Orvis 12 watt thread. I think it's pretty fine, very strong. Now I'll get it started and wrap back over it a few times. And I probably should have cut the tag end out here, but I had it in my head that I was going to wrap up over it a little bit, but it never, that never really happened. So I'm getting the bobbin back in place. But this time I'm not going to bobbin holder. But this time I'm not going to throw the the bobbin thread over the bobbin holder. I'm going to use that holder. I'm going to put a hook in the loop, a heavy shepherd's hook in the loop, and I'm going to throw that over the bobbin ho holder and kind of put that on center. And that way I can kind of do a hands-free wrap while I go around the, uh, use my rotary feature and while I go around the post. Still can't pull real tight. Kind of depends on the weight of your shepherd's hook. And you can see the stub end of that thread got in the way a few times. And again, I'm not sure I wrapped over it like I intended to. So we'll get that out of the way. One thing to notice here is I'm working my way back down. The, uh, the hackle is kind of wrapping around that thread. So a couple of things. One, I made that loop shorter than I might have done otherwise, and I had it, the bobbin holder close, keeping it all on the shot or all on camera. Um, in the real world, I could have left, left that loop a little longer and got that more out of the way. It wouldn't have wrapped up. But I lifted the shepherd's hook up and unwrapped it, and you know it unwraps really, really easy. It's not a big deal. Here I am still using the rotary feature to wrap the hackle. Wrapping from top to bottom, putting the cupped side up to keep the fibers from extending down and in the way. The, the argument goes back and forth on that. What's the right way? Um, I don't know. They, there's no wrong way. I can tell you that. So here we're going to add a little super glue and finish this way. Um, we could cut things loose right there and do a whip finish, but the super glue method's working pretty well for me, and I like that I don't have the extra bulk or too many wraps. So I'll do about three wraps of glued thread, pull it tight and hold it for a second, and then you can snip it off. So we snipped off that thread. We'll remove the uh, remainder of the saddle hackle. Come back in and trim them a little closer. I'm probably being hypercritical, but if I were doing that again, I'm not sure I like the shape of that uh, the thorax. So here we're going to come in to cut the post. I'm going to angle it a little bit. That's just something I like to do. I like to make them a little longer than the hackle fibers. And that's pretty much it. We're going to set it back in the vise in the correct orientation here. And don't forget to go back in and put a little head cement on the whip finish right behind the hook eye. So. But that's the finished fly, and I hope that I was able to share from you, share with you some some techniques or some things that I do. And again, it's kind of fun just building. Once you have materials out, it's kind of fun to run through a series of different flies that use the same materials. So here's a little text about everything we just saw. And if you're still with me, thanks for hanging in there. Please excuse the shameless self promotion that comes next. I'm not necessarily just trying to sell books. This is where you may learn a little bit about me. All right, until next time, stay safe.